We know from Ephesians 6.18 that we should pray at all times. The question that arises is, of course, how that is supposed to work when people can't afford to spend their entire day in church. Here, the book by Brother Lawrence can give helpful advice as it talks about the practice of the presence of God. Its central idea is that to be close to God, you don't always have to be at church. You can create an oratory in your heart where you can go to talk to God in a gentle, humble, and loving way. Brother Lawrence explains that for him, there is no difference between time for work and time for prayer. He says that even in the noisy kitchen, with people asking for things all around you, you can feel God's peace just like you would if you were kneeling in front of the blessed sacrament. In this video, I will explain what the presence of God means as I summarize his book, and I will offer some ideas on how to put the presence of God into practice. And of course, at the end of the video, I will also give you my opinion on the book. Before I do all of that, let me give you a brief introduction to the author. For me, it was the first time I heard of him when I discovered this book, so maybe you're unfamiliar with him as well. Brother Lawrence lived in the 17th century, and he was a lay brother in a Carmelite monastery in Paris. His parents were peasants, so he didn't get much schooling. When he was young, he joined the army because he needed money. During that time, he had an experience that set him on a unique spiritual journey, because at age 16, he saw a leafless tree in the middle of a battlefield, and he realized that the tree would be full of leaf and flower in a few months, and so he saw the tree as a symbol of God's ability to transform the human heart. Later, he decided to live as a hermit, and so at age 26, he joined the Order of the Discalced Cap... He... The jo <laughs> the Order of the Discalced Carmelites in Paris, taking the name Lawrence of the Resurrection. He spent his life in Paris, mostly working in the kitchen and later fixing sandals. Even though he had humble roles, many people respected him and asked for his wisdom and guidance. His teachings, shared through conversations and letters, were compiled by Abbé Joseph de Beaufort into the popular book The Practice of the Presence of God after his death. And now let's start with a summary of the book. As I've said at the beginning of this video, the presence of God is all about casually keeping God in your thoughts or offering up the activity we need to do. To quote Brother Lawrence directly, the most holy and necessary practice in our spiritual life is the presence of God. That means finding constant pleasure in His divine company, speaking humbly and lovingly with Him in all seasons at every moment without limiting the conversation in any way. This is especially important in times of temptation, sorrow, separation from God, and even in times of unfaithfulness and sin. Brother Lawrence advises us that we must try to converse with God in little ways while we do our work. This doesn't mean that we should be saying memorized prayers or trying to recite previously formed thoughts. Rather, we should purely and simply reveal our hearts as the words come to us. So, essentially, the idea is to incorporate God into the thoughts you were thinking anyway, so simply talk to God every now and then when you're working, studying, or doing some chores. Whatever we do, even if we are reading the Word or praying, we should stop for a few minutes, as often as possible, to praise God from the depths of our hearts, to enjoy Him there in secret. Since we believe that God is always with us, no matter what we may be doing, why shouldn't we stop for a while to adore Him, to praise Him, to petition Him, to offer Him our hearts, and to thank Him? What works well for me is keeping a crucifix on my desk when I study, so whenever I'm stuck with a problem or something, I can look at the crucifix and share my current struggle with the Lord. Or, even without intending to pray at the moment, I inevitably look at that uh, crucifix next to my laptop, and when there's a crucifix, that's a great opportunity to practice the presence of God. Actually, right now, it's also right next to the camera. I can show it to you. That's what it looks like. And what I also like to do is I have a picture of the Sacred Heart of Jesus as my phone background, or I have a picture of the crucified Jesus as the background on WhatsApp, which is supposed to remind me not to gossip or say anything else that could be sinful. Or an even simpler way to practice the presence of God is to thank God for something beautiful you see or experience. It just takes a few seconds and not only helps you to pray continuously, but it might also make you happier because you become aware of all the beauty that surrounds you. 
If the sun is shining, thank God for its beauty. When it's raining, you can thank him for watering the plants in your garden. And even if there's no window in your room, you can thank God for having created such geniuses which invented electricity so that now you can have artificial light in your room. Also, when you see a beautiful person, you can thank God for his masterpiece, um, for this masterpiece of his creation. And you can also thank God for the things in your life that are not beautiful at first sight. Like, for example, when you're experiencing a temptation, you can thank God for having shown you your weakness. In essence, the idea is that we know from Romans 8.28 that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, and we can practice to see the good that God is drawing out of something which doesn't appear to be good at first sight. If you have other ideas on how to practice the presence of God, feel free to write it in the comments. To quote Brother Lawrence again, offer your heart to him at every moment. Don't restrict your love of him with rules or special devotions. Go out in faith with love and humility. St. Francis de Sales wrote in his Introduction to the Devout Life that it's even okay to interrupt a particular vocal devotion, like for example the Rosary, if one is drawn to mental prayer at that moment. So, from my understanding, that means that when you're praying the rosary, for example, and you have a thought that you'd like to meditate on, you can interrupt the recitation of the rosary to meditate on that thought. To quote St. Francis directly, If, while saying vocal prayers, your heart feels drawn to mental prayer, don't resist it, but calmly let your mind fall into that channel without troubling because you have not finished your appointed vocal prayers. The mental prayer you have substituted for them is more acceptable to God and more profitable to your soul. Brother Lawrence explained that a little effort was needed to form the habit of continuously conversing with God and telling him what was happening in his life. But after a little careful practice, God's love refreshed him and it all became quite easy. Brother Lawrence also highlights the importance of love and he explains that knowledge is necessary for love because we can only love what we know. In the way of God, thoughts count for little, love does everything. And it is not necessary to have great things to do. I turn my little omelette in the pan for the love of God. When it is finished, if I have nothing to do, I prostrate myself on the ground and adore my God, who gave me the grace to make it, after which I arise, more content than a king. When I cannot do anything else, it is enough for me to have lifted a straw from earth for the love of God. We also know from 1 Corinthians 13 that love is essential. If I speak in the tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but not to have love, I gain nothing. Saint Therese of Lisieux also often highlighted the enormous importance of love. How easy it is to please Jesus, to ravish his heart. We have merely to love him, while at the same time forgetting ourselves. Here it's important to mention that love doesn't mean an emotion in this context, because obviously it's not always possible to feel love for God, so it's enough if we ask for the grace to love him, and then make an act of love, so we consciously decide that we want to love God. And as mentioned before, Brother Lawrence also points out that knowledge of God is necessary for love of God. We have to know someone before we can truly love him. In order to know God, we must think about him often. Once we get to know him, we will think about him even more often, because where our treasure is, there is also our heart. Another great way to expand your knowledge of God is of course subscribing to this channel, so please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and if you already have, thank you, and maybe you'd like to share this video to help someone else with expanding their knowledge of God. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. For me, there was little new in that book. So it's less than 100 pages long and I personally haven't derived much benefit from reading it because I've already heard of the ideas contained in the presence of God before. 
However, I have a feeling that the people who like the story of a soul by Saint Therese of Lisieux would also like this book because both books were written by outwardly very simple people. So in total I would rate the book a 6 or maybe a 7 out of 10 and I'd say if you usually would rate books similarly as I do in my videos then I don't really recommend this book. But if you like simple and edifying books like the story of a soul this book might be just for you. That's my it for today. I hope you liked the video. See you soon. God bless and bye!